Hey everybody. Oops, <laughs> my phone went off. Um, welcome to Reading the Bible to Cats. And Guster is exhausted. But you know, it's daytime and they pretty much sleep during the day. I love how he's covering his face. Guster? Guster, you're covering your face. You're hiding your face from us. Well, anyway, let's pounce on Hebrews chapter 8 and see what we find. I'll read from the Archaeological Study Bible. Okay. Oh, wait. Sorry, everybody. Ooh, I think I just got a package. Uh-oh. That means um, I have to go get it, otherwise a porch pirate will arrive shortly. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Um, well, here, I'll take you with me. I'll just leave the camera trained on um, Guster because he's so cute. And we'll go get my package. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> this is my life. And I don't edit and I don't want to start another video hold on let's just check hold on walking outside i hope that i hope the mic will pick up this will be an experiment oh hi good to what was that um i i'm not no oh um can, um may i ask what what this is about so i'm actually one of the project managers in the area um, we're just going to uh, respond Sorry, I, I'm on a on a thing right now, so I, I I can't I can't talk right now. I'm I'm on this. I've got. All right. Okay, everybody, that was awkward. You know, it's just kind of awkward when um, people want information, like because they can be cursed on the joint. You know what I'm talking about. I don't like to give out information like that. You know, that's, I don't know. I'm just so, like, wary. It's like, uh, can't you see I have a microphone in my hand? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I guess I was rude to that guy, but you just don't know. I don't know if people are casing the joint. And actually, the, um, the landlords, they're gone. They're gone for the week. But, um, anyway, let's just read the Bible. Okay. Awkward. Awkward. I thought I had a package, but I didn't even get to see because somebody stopped me and asked me a million questions about who owns this place and where are they? And can we come on in and break in later tonight? Would that be a good time? All right, um, let's read Hebrews chapter 8. Gesture, I know you saw that person too. They may have been completely kind, but they weren't taking the social cues of, I've got a microphone in my hand. Can't you see I'm making a video for reading the Bible to cats? Anyway, awkward, strange. <sighs> Maybe I'm paranoid. Who knows? Maybe he was an angel in disguise. Or maybe I was being rude. Anyway, okay, Hebrews chapter 8. The point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle, set up by the Lord, not by man. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already men who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy 
and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle, quote, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain, unquote. But the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is of which he is mediator is superior to the old one and it is founded on better promises for if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant no place would have been sought for another but god found fault with the people and said The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turned away from them. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. Oh, sorry, everybody, I messed up that line. Take two. Okay, let me take that line again. Because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor, or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness, and will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. Okay, everyone, that's the end of Hebrews chapter 8. Yeah, new covenant. It's such a beautiful new covenant because there's so much freedom in it because of the Messiah, because of Yeshua. You know, it's like where the spirit, that other verse, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just the new covenant is, is just full of freedom, you know, and, and a feeling of freedom. Um, yeah, well, he writes, he writes, his his laws in in our minds and writes them on our hearts you know and that's god's work and god's doing let's see if there's something a study note i can read um do 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 eight one oh yeah this, it says, see the right hand in ancient thinking on page 1983. Yeah, verse 1, the point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by man. Let's see that note, um, the right hand in ancient thinking on page 1983. Oh, man, I don't know. Maybe I was a little paranoid, but that, sorry, I'm still thinking about um, <laughs> that, that man who was trying to get lots of information. Let's see. 1983. Okay, hold on. 1983. Sorry, everybody. I hope I wasn't being, uh, you know, 
not a nice, hospitable person. But then you don't necessarily want to invite break-ins into your place. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at this. Cultural and historical notes. The right hand in ancient thinking. Hebrews 1. The hand was symbolic in the ancient world. It was believed that from it one either bestowed grace or pronounced punishment. In addition, the hand represented the authority of an individual, the instrument of carrying out a person's intentions. The right hand, in particular, was special for two reasons. First, the left hand was universally acknowledged to be the one used for sanitation purposes. Sorry, you all know what they're referring to, I'm sure. Or maybe not. Um, the left hand was universally acknowledged to be the one used for sanitation purposes. <laughs> you know what they mean. It's like the toilette <laughs> in ancient cultures. And maybe some cultures still today, they use the left hand to take care of what's behind you if you catch my drift. But let's hope you don't. Okay, let's move on. For sanitation purposes <laughs> um, and therefore was less respected than its counterpart secondly since most people were right-handed the right hand was considered to have innately superior strength and capability because of its special physical status the right hand was assigned important metaphorical significance frequently expressing blessing fellowship or comfort Certain acts of ritual cleansing, as well as the ordination of the Aaronic priesthood, involved the right hand or the right hand side. The right hand was also used in taking vows in judicial matters, since it was believed to represent the character, will, and actions of the individual taking the vow. In literature, it personified a king or deity's character and deeds. While in the Hebrew Bible, the right hand represented God's ultimate strength and provision for his people. To be seated at the right hand of a ruler or host meant occupying a place of high honor. The position itself was considered an indicator of the power and authority of the one holding it. Someone who sat at the king's right hand was, as in the modern English idiom, his, quote, right-hand man, unquote, the one acting as the principal agent of the king's authority, through whom he carried out his most important work. In addition, Sitting at the right hand was a statement of fellowship and favor between the central figure and the individual so honored. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is depicted several times in the Bible as sitting at the right hand of God the Father for eternity. Here are the scriptures on that. Psalm 110, verse 1, Acts 2, verses 33 through 35, Acts 5 verse 31 Romans 8 34 Ephesians 1 verse 20 Colossians 3 verse 1 Hebrews 1 verse 3 and 13 Hebrews 8 verse 1 Hebrews 10 verse 12 Hebrews 12 verse 2 and first Peter 3 verse 22 okay that's interesting yeah right hand right hand man um let's see let's see if there's anything else that's in no okay that's kind of it yeah talks about you know the new covenant which I believe Jeremiah prophesied, you know, in the Hebrew scriptures that there would be a new covenant. And then this book in the New Testament kind of spells out the new covenant that, that we are under. Okay, well, now I'm kind of all um, scattered <laughs> because of... Oh, this will be an unusual video. Guster has a little white dot on his forehead. Anyway, let's say a prayer. Lord, 
thank you again for your word and um forgive me if i was rude to that person i don't know i just don't know and um i don't know anyway lord um just protect this house from i don't know people who might want to break it <laughs> i wasn't born yesterday <laughs> no I'm kidding i'm not paranoid everybody trust me but you know the block sorry lord i'm <laughs> breaking from my prayer but the block i live on there has been crime here actually there were two um there were yeah there were a couple there was some shooting um you know it's a it's a fun cool neighborhood but there is there is crime here you know like in any city for the most part it's never been a problem i mean anyway lord um just put your angels around this house and around the neighborhood and um help me not be so scattered because i feel very scattered but we thank you for your word and for what you're saying in your word and thank you for the new covenant there's so much freedom in the new covenant and your holy spirit is able you know through this new covenant through messiah to work in our very hearts and i just ask that you continue that work in me as I, I, obviously i need more work and i pray for everybody who's watching or listening that you would meet their needs lord um all the prayer needs that have met, been mentioned in the comments lord i hold those up to you and i just ask for your grace and your love and your peace to um just meet each person lord in a in a special way in a unique way that's unique to their needs and pray for the peace of jerusalem and for the peace of israel and for protection for israel and lord i pray for um just the war-torn areas that there would be healing and your light and grace pray for the hostages that they would be miraculously delivered the ones who still remain with us from that you would set them free from their captivity pray all these things and oh i pray for my country and the election cycle that could is apt to get crazy but we pray that it wouldn't get crazy and that things would be amazingly peaceful and smooth and i pray for my niece that you would heal her and that she would have a great life pray these things in jesus name amen all right everybody gusters snoring okay everyone I'll talk to you later. Bye.